Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine Reyes. If you have no idea who I am, I'm a first generation low income undergraduate at Stanford University. And I made this channel to help other first generation low income students get better access to higher education through my college related videos. Today's video is going to be about the classes that I took for my fall quarter in my freshman year at Stanford. I decided to make this video today because I know that the incoming freshmen are either enrolling or beginning to enroll into their classes and I know that as a first generation low income student it's very difficult and scary to go into college not knowing what types of classes to enroll in because you have no idea, you haven't had guidance. So. A lot of it because it's so free and you get to choose your own classes is kind of scary because you don't really have any guidance. So I wanted to make this video so other first generation students can see how I approached my very first quarter at Stanford. For my fall quarter I took 13 units. The minimum that you can take is 12 and the, around the recommended is up to 15 but um, all students and all undergrads at Stanford can take up to 20 units. If you want to take more than 20, you can petition. I took 13 units because I wanted my first quarter to be super easy and light in coursework because I knew that my high school um, had not prepared me for college level courses and I just didn't have that kind of rigor experience. So I wanted to be kind to myself just to get a feel of how much I can handle for the rest of my college experience. The first class that I will mention is a Frosh 101. So this class is two units and I took it with the RAs in my dorm. So this class was actually located in my dorm. We didn't have a classroom or anything. It was in this theater that we had in the dorm and we would sit there like on Monday nights I think and I don't remember the class size but it was probably around 12 students and this wasn't really much of a class it was more of a discussion based group where we just sit down and we talk we eat some snacks and we talk about our experiences our lives and how we are able to adjust into Stanford so the point of Frosh 101 is to help you transition as a freshman from high school into this college life and you get the advice from your RAs and from other students that may have more experience from you. You also have the opportunity to engage with your dorm mates or other people in your building. This class was really good at normalizing feelings of anxiety or imposter syndrome that freshmen usually feel. So I definitely recommend this course if you're taking it at Stanford or maybe a similar course if you're going to a different university. The second class that I took was called Fire Stories. The official name I think was English 9CT. I took this class to fulfill a ways requirement. Stanford has certain requirements for you to graduate and uh, they have a list of these requirements called a ways. I will be describing the ways requirement in a different video, but for now, it's just a list of certain requirements that you have to meet. For this class, I took it to fulfill my creative expression requirement and it was super, super fun. We were a very, very small class. I would say that it was about eight of us. Um, a majority of them were upperclassmen, but three of us are, were freshmen, so I didn't feel too left out. And uh, the conversations were extremely intimate and super close because there were so few of us in that class. And so far, it has been the smallest class that I've taken at Stanford. We were able to connect and talk about writing and different ways that we can express ourselves through different mediums of art, such as photography or film or poems. And it was just a, such a great class and it was so chill and laid back. We didn't have very many assignments. And every other Wednesday, we even had a bonfire. So we would sit around um, late at night and just tell stories to each other because it was called fire stories. So we would sometimes tell ghost stories or stories about our families or stuff like that. It was such a close class and I had a relationship with each of my class members. It was amazing and I totally recommend small classes like that. I took it because I didn't really know what to expect. I just took it because I figured that I needed um, to take English at some point and it was really not that it was so easy and I'm so so grateful that I took that class The third class that I took was titled how to make a racist with professor Stephen O. Roberts This class was absolutely my favorite and has still been my favorite 
um, for my entire freshman year. It was so amazing. We talked about systemic racism and how it's been ingrained in our lives and our different experiences. And I got to see how my peers experience racism through their ethnicities and their races. And it was so eye-opening and we built such a great relationship with each other. This class was also a very small class. I would say it was about 20 of us in that class. And we actually had to apply to this class. So not everyone had the opportunity to take it but um, the application process did allow for the class to be um, selectively diverse. So there were Asian students, Latino students, black students, white students. I can go on and on about this class. Professor Roberts is such an amazing, amazing professor and I took him again in my winter quarter, but I will be making a separate video about my winter quarter courses. But I just loved that professor and I loved all of my classmates. I, if they're watching, I love you guys. <laughs> you guys are amazing and you guys have really changed my college experience and all of us still keep in contact now and it's been so great. I cannot emphasize how much I love this class. We did have weekly assignments and weekly readings, but they were all so, so interesting that I wanted to do these assignments, I wanted to do these readings, I wanted to learn more about systemic racism and racial hierarchies and all of that. And I just really love the structure of that class as well. My final class that I took was chemistry. It was horrible. I walked into Stanford thinking that I was going to be a chemistry major because I did so well in chemistry in high school and little did I know that there is a whole world that I had no idea of how difficult and complicated chemistry really is. And Stanford is actually very notorious for this specific chemistry course because it is a weed out class. Weed out meaning that the, um, this introduction class is used to weed out any students who may be thinking about majoring in chemistry or maybe thinking about being a doctor and they need to take chemistry and an engineer or chemical engineer or something. It's so, so difficult on purpose to break you and it definitely broke me. So I am out, I am no longer a chemistry major just because of that class and that series. But that was because of my background. So my high school didn't offer AP chemistry. We didn't even offer AP classes in any of the sciences. So I never really got to go into depth with any of the sciences. So I was really, really not prepared for this class. And there were two chemistry courses that you can take. There was Chem M and Chem A. I took Chem A because it was more elaborated and uh, slower paced. Um, the All of the material was spread out over two quarters. So I had to take Chem A and Chem B in my winter quarter. But Chem A classes were accelerated for people who had already had experience with chemistry and you had to take a placement exam but because I already knew that I was not experienced at all or I didn't have a strong background in chemistry I just took the slower class I didn't even take the placement exam because I just placed myself I'm not kidding everything I learned in high school chemistry I learned within the first week of Stanford chemistry it was insane like we just went through all of that in two classroom meetings like this and it was I was blown because I was like what is beyond this and it was a whole world it was too much <laughs> and I don't regret taking that class because then I would have majored in chemistry and that would have been horrible um, but it was very difficult and uh, I know sometimes I exaggerate a little bit but it was still very difficult I had to work on chemistry for at least three hours of um, every single day of the week and then five hours on Sundays and I just was studying and doing homework all of the time like it was a non-stop of this chemistry work and it was just a lot and um, I'm actually really glad that I, that was a one heavy class that I took because I felt like I didn't have too much free time. Um, I felt like if I had took a fourth easy class, then I wouldn't have experienced or wouldn't have gotten a real taste of the difficulty or rigor that college courses can be. Now, again, I'm going to emphasize that this was my experience with chemistry. I've had fly friends 
who took chemistry and it was a piece of cake and they got A's in that class and it was amazing for them. They were like experienced with chemistry. It totally depends on your background or maybe you want to just take the class and then you experience it yourself. I'm just saying that it was very hard for me, but that was just me because I had no experience and it was just difficult because I also had no idea how to study. I didn't notice that college requires a whole new strategy to studying and it takes studying to a whole other level. I had never studied before so hard in my life like I did in that chemistry class. But I got a B, so it wasn't, it was doable. I didn't fail the class. I did fail an exam. But the labs were pretty cool, I'll tell you that. One thing about the labs, um, we did have labs, I can't remember what day it was, it was probably like Tuesday or something. And we would meet up and we would have like these lab coats and like our little goggles and like we'd walk in and we'd have to wear gloves and like, it was really like professional and like really like I had never seen uh, that kind of um, money used in a classroom because they had a real stuff you know like we had a lab where they had vr sets for every single person in there and like we were able to walk into a molecule and be able to like tell you what this is a proton and an electron and like what different parts of the molecule we're in or it was crazy like i had never touched a vr set and like i had never like had that experience of walking into a molecule and like using that kind of technology um, applied into the class provided for us so it was amazing that was a, that was a cool experience for my lab at stanford i would tell you that they are not cheap they will give you a legit vr sets they didn't give it to us i didn't just like get it as a gift I couldn't keep it I wish I could I'm just saying that they have very legit stuff for you to use and that is a perk of going to a very elite and wealthy institution another thing about chemistry was that they required you to buy your own book a lot of those classes usually do like mathematics um, chemistry or physics biology they require you to purchase this huge textbook um, I got the e-textbook, but fortunately for me, I was able to find the free PDF, so I didn't have to spend $400 for that chemistry textbook, but I did have to spend $170 to access my homework. Now, I'll explain what that means in a different video of explaining what access codes are, because I did not know this was a thing. Why do I have to pay to access my own homework? I don't want to. But it was part of my grade and I had to do it. It was not a very fly friendly class because the course also came with a $50 course fee on top of the fact that you had to buy your lab coat for $50. And I just borrowed, I used the borrowed um, uh, uh, goggles thingies. You could buy your own, but I just, no, I'm, I'm poor, I'm sorry. If you're low income, I totally recommend looking at the course fees or maybe additional fees that classes may require you to make and take that into consideration when you're choosing your courses because uh, sometimes they may have a hundred dollars that out of nowhere they're going to be requiring you to spend on some art supplies or on a lab coat or something like that and sometimes these classes are not necessarily low income friendly so I recommend looking out for that before you enroll but if you are stuck in a class and suddenly they are making you spend a certain amount of money that you don't necessarily have to spend you can always always talk to your professor or your TAs do not be afraid to ask them or maybe talk to your FGLI community center if your school has one and ask them about how you can get those fees waived or if there is another free alternative to those resources. My point is don't be afraid to ask if your class requires you to make some purchases that you don't necessarily have the money for. 
a lot of students are FGLI and a lot of students have this same problem. So don't worry if they're going to judge you and who cares if they're going to judge you. I'd rather have someone stare at me rather than me pay $200 for an unnecessary fee. Make sure you always, always ask those questions because sometimes a course may require you to buy a $300 textbook, but in reality, those textbooks are not necessary for the course. Ask around, ask your RAs or upperclassmen and ask maybe they have an old textbook, they already took that class and they don't need it. Or maybe they have access to a free PDF that you can use of an older version of the same textbook. Trust me, don't be scared. Um, my chemistry course required me to have the fourth edition of the chemistry textbook and I had the third edition because the third edition was free. And that's all I needed. I totally survived that class. For my Frosh 101 class, I took an average of about two hours a week for that class. The class was about an hour and a half, so I really didn't have to pair, prepare anything outside of that class. We never had homework, so about two hours a week for that class. For Fire Stories, um, we had that class for two hours twice a week, so that was four hours, maybe five hours a week. That's a stretch. So we also didn't have very many assignments outside of that class, but we still had a few. So I would say that around five hours a week for that three unit fire stories class. For my how to make a racist class, it was I think an hour and a half twice a week. So that was three hours. I would say it was also five hours a week because we had some readings that we had to do before class. And sometimes we had assignments or papers that we had to write and but they were super easy and super in, um, engaging. So I would say that about it was also about five hours per week for how to make a racist. For chemistry, that was a lot more. I would say it was anywhere between 15 to 20 hours a week. But for other students, it, made a, it might have taken them 10 hours a week for chemistry because they didn't have to study as much or they didn't spend as much time on the problem sets because to them it was a little easier. So like I said, this is just the amount of time that I spend for my classes and that is how much time it took me, but it may be very different for you. That is just my experience, a very summarized experience of chemistry, how to make a racist, fire stories, and Frosh 101, which were the four classes that I took for my fall quarter of my freshman year at Stanford. I'm going to make future videos about the courses that I took in my winter quarter and my spring quarter at Stanford for my freshman year. So make sure to look out for those and subscribe so you get those notifications of when those videos release. You are not only adjusting academically, but you're adjusting socially, personally, financially, like it's just a big change. So it's okay to be kind to yourself for your first quarter for your first semester as a freshman especially if you're first generation low income but if you feel like you can handle more go ahead and take more I really encourage you to do whatever you think that you can handle and there's also a period for most universities where you can take the course and if you are not feeling it or you feel like this is not something that you want to take maybe from the first two three weeks you can drop the course my strategy was i knew i i wasn't prepared for the college rigor so i just started off small and i'm slowly increasing my spring quarter i actually took 18 units so that was a big jump um, and i will be talking about that more make sure to subscribe like comment and let me know if you still have any questions or anything that you want me to clarify down in the comments below or you can follow us on instagram at first gen first on twitter first gen one st or at our email which is now info at firstgenfirst.org thank you for watching bye super easy to handle um coursework that you that first mm, this class was really good at normalizing uh, videos about the courses that I took in my winter year and in my spring quarter in my winter year what